This cataract appears like an immature senile cataract, but it is actually an intumescent cataract. Let us observe this surgery. This is the main incision. The patient is under topical anesthesia and the patient is not able to cooperate well. The main incision has been made with a 2.8 millimeter steel keratome. This is a side port on the right side of the main incision and this is another side port on the left side of the main incision. These side ports are about two and a half clock hours away from the main incision. And now an air bubble is injected and tripen blue dye is applied beneath this air bubble over the anterior lens capsule. And then the dye is washed out with BSS. And now, see the cataract is not dense white. It la appears like an immature senile cataract, but as soon as we will incise the anterior capsule with a 26 gauge bent needle, we will see that there is a leakage of some oily fluid, which indicates that this is an intumescent cataract and there is a high intralenticular pressure. It's not common to see a cataract like this to have intumescence. See, as soon as the anticapsule has been incised, some oily fluid has come out. Immediately I decide to do a small rexis. In intumescent cataracts, I always do two stage rexes. First, a mini rexis in this way, and then aspirate some cortical lens matter through this small opening. And the intralenticular pressure is reduced in this way. The Simco cannula does the job very well. Aspiration of some cortical lens matter is carried out. The nucleus is tapped and some cortical matter from behind comes anteriorly along the equator. Thus the capsular bag is decompressed well, intralenticular pressure is reduced well and then after injecting visco, vana scissor is used to make a cut at the margin of this minirexis and then this utrita forceps is used again to enlarge this minirexis into an optimum sized one. The CCC is done and this is a fairly round rexis and now visco is injected again we have not rotated the nucleus well so here the irrigation is on some superficial cortical lens matter is removed and then I am trying to rotate the nucleus and the irrigating fluid from the handpiece itself is being used to hydrate the equatorial region of this cataract. Yes, the nucleus rotated and now this nucleus appears quite hard about grade 4 nuclear sclerosis and this is direct submarine chop. The tip goes through the substance of the nucleus towards the opposite equator and the nucleus is chopped. The nucleus is rotated 180 degree and then the nucleus gets completely separated into two halves. This is one heminucleus divided into two fragments. Each fragment is then emulsified. The ultrasonic energy used in this case is 70 percent, fluorate is 45 ml per minute and vacuum is 450 millimeter of mercury. 
So one heminucleus has been managed and now this is the epinuclear shell of this heminucleus. Let it be there. Let it support the capsular bag for some time. This is the other heminucleus. It is divided into two parts. Each part is then emulsified. The machine being used is Faro's from Oatly. Faro's has speep mode. When the tip of the FECO handpiece gets occluded and if the machine is in speep mode, vacuum can be controlled by foot switch. This is the epinuclear shell. It is removed. The cortical lens matter is removed through the side port. Small bit of cortex was there. It was removed through side port. And now some visco is injected and uh, 23 gauze Simco is being used to remove the cortex. In this case there is no sub cortex. Only some cortex from 3 o'clock to 9 o'clock that has been removed by the Simco cannula. And now Visco is injected. In this case a uh, hydrophobic acrylic single piece intraocular lens has been implanted in the capsular bag. The lens is dialed we can see some air bubble one in the anterior chamber and two air bubbles are behind the nucleus. I'm going to use a Simco cannula to flash some BSAs in the anterior chamber and behind the intraocular lens. Behind the intraocular lens means in the capsular bag. If we flash some BSAs, lot of visco comes out through the main incision along with BSS. So this is a nice way of removing visco and then after flushing about 4 to 5 cc of BSS say 2.5 cc in anterior chamber 2.5 cc in capsular bag then we use IA to further remove some more visco. And once the visco is nicely removed, clarity improves. You can see faint red glow. The optic of the intraocular lens is overlapped by the rexus margin all around. So this is a nice rexus. If we can do rexus in this way, we don't need a femtolaser, but it is a good instrument. If you can afford a femtolaser, you can go for it. But maintenance of a femtolaser is very high, and you must see whether your patients can afford that much money in your area of practice. Thank you very much for your attention. Hope this video will help you in developing your surgical skills. Be a great surgeon and serve your patients with love, respect, empathy and great surgical competence.